This is Optimal Finance Daily, episode 1833. How Frequent Traders Can Stay Organized for Taxes by Robert Farrington of thecollegeinvestor.com. And I'm your host and personal finance enthusiast, Diana Merriam. Now let's get right to it and continue optimizing your life. How Frequent Traders Can Stay Organized for Taxes by Robert Farrington of thecollegeinvestor.com. Frequent traders use a combination of research, current events, and technical analysis to buy and sell stocks and options. This approach to investing sometimes yields alpha, overperformance relative to a benchmark, but it always yields more complicated tax filing. If you buy and sell financial positions, you need to stay organized to avoid an IRS audit. We've outlined seven habits of highly organized traders. If you trade more than once a month, you should implement these immediately. They might not lead to alpha, but they will lead to an easier time filing your taxes. Daily habits for frequent traders. If you trade, here's what you should be doing every time. Number one, keep a trade diary. Frequent traders love to talk about their 10 baggers without remembering all the unsuccessful trades that paved the way. But a trading diary gives you even more color. Each time you place a trade, you should write down the following. What did I trade and why? Did I follow rules or purchase hedges? What were they? Did the trade work? This habit will make you a better and more organized trader. Number two, record trades in a spreadsheet or software. Every time you buy or sell, you need to record the ticker, that date, your cost basis when you buy, and your selling price when you sell. Record reinvested dividends or taxes paid too. You should also include fees associated with buying and selling. Software like DIY.fund can make this easier to manage. You could also consider entering information into the Maxit Tax Manager from Ally Invest. Whatever system you use, enter your information every day. Your brokerage account will issue this same information, but it can be a mountain of paperwork come tax time. If you lose the statements, you will struggle to pay the correct amount in taxes. And number three, keep receipts in a folder. Traders who trade more than 338 times per year and who seek to make profit from market movement may qualify to treat trading as a business. Business owners can write off expenses like computers or cell phones, but you can't claim expenses that you don't track. Make a point to stick receipts in a folder so you can claim appropriate expenses at tax time. We recommend putting together an income tax binder system to keep all your tax information in one spot. Weekly habits for frequent traders. We put this one down as weekly, but honestly, it doesn't have to be. Check in once a month on this if you're not getting paid a lot of dividends. Record dividends received. Many investors automatically reinvest dividends that they receive. This potentially drives up your basis in a stock. If you fail to adjust your basis, you will overpay your taxes. Taking the time to record the dividends you receive also helps you keep track of yield and other important investment metrics. There's nothing worse, trust me on this, than reinvesting your dividends for years only to see the company acquired or a portion spun off. Calculating the new basis on what you receive can be a nightmare and you could overpay in taxes as a result. Monthly habits for frequent traders. Reconcile statements. Your brokerage will issue financial statements to you each month. The statements will include a summary of all trades, including your cost basis and fees. Review these statements every month. Mistakes happen. Reconciling statements allows to detect problems and fix them right away. 
annual habits for frequent traders. Number one, talk with your accountant. Frequent traders should talk with an accountant at least once per year. They will remind you about rules regarding short and long-term capital gains. They'll help you avoid wash sales and they can help you find the right tools to keep you organized. Unless you trade full time, you probably will do most of your bookkeeping on your own. However, an accountant can look over your work to make sure you're keeping track of everything correctly. They can also give you insights into what tax write-offs you might have missed. Number two, prepare your taxes. Most frequent traders will have at least three income statements they need to review. These will include the 1099 INT, the 1099 DIV, and the 1099 B. You'll get one of these forms from each brokerage firm where you trade. Most frequent traders stick to one or two brokerage firms each year. This allows them to work through their tax requirements from a single 1099 B form. If you have multiple 1099B forms, you'll have to work through the tax implications with an accountant. Be sure to deduct all your current year losses and any allowable carryover losses before you declare capital gains. Tax time is the one time of year when a bad trade works in your favor. Even traders who pay someone else to do their taxes should look through their tax documents on their own. This will help you avoid costly errors or fraud. Stay organized for tax time. Adhering to a system will help you prepare your taxes and make better trades year round. It might be annoying to implement, but it's imperative for frequent traders. Nobody cares about your money as much as you. Take a little time to organize your trading and you'll see the payoff. You just listened to the post titled, How Frequent Traders Can Stay Organized for Taxes by Robert Farrington of thecollegeinvestor.com. I just learned about an unbelievable hack for people who want to invest in fine art. It's a fintech company called Masterworks. They give you access to one of the most exclusive investments in history, blue chip art. Not many people realize that blue chip art prices outpace the S&P 500 by 164% from 1995 to 2021. But not everyone has millions to buy a Picasso. And that's why Masterworks is amazing. They let regular people like you and me invest in works by legends like Banksy, Basquiat, and Warhol. Here's how it works. Masterworks analyze millions of data points to find quality paintings. After they go out and buy them, you can purchase shares representing an investment in those artworks on their platform. With over 330,000 users, demand is high, but you can get priority access with my special link. Just head to masterworks.io slash OFD. That's masterworks.io slash OFD. See important disclosures at masterworks.io slash disclosures. This article reiterated for me Yet another reason why I'm a long-term passive investor. And before I get hate mail from all the day traders out there, I don't think there's anything wrong with day trading if you really enjoy it and you're not gambling with your life savings. For most of us, day trading is not going to help us meet our financial goals. Keep in mind that day traders are taxed on short-term, not long-term capital gains and that makes a big difference come tax time. Long-term capital gains is a tax applied to assets held for more than a year. The long-term capital gains tax rates are 0%, 15%, and 20%, depending on your income. These rates are typically much lower than the ordinary income tax rate. Short-term capital gains tax is a tax applied to profits from selling an asset you've held for less than a year. Short-term capital gains taxes are paid at the same rate as you'd pay on your ordinary income, and the average federal rate on short-term capital gains is 24%. You only pay capital gains taxes when your gain is realized, meaning when you sell your investments. If you trade frequently, this means you can end up paying short-term capital gains every single year. 
On the other hand, if you buy and hold for 10 years, you pay long-term capital gains just when you sell. That timing is critical because it means the money you haven't paid in taxes every year has been in your account compounding instead. This matters a lot because the larger the market returns, the more a day trader needs to outperform the market just to keep up after taxes. Since 2010, the S&P 500 has averaged annual returns of 13.6%. To beat that return with a 24% tax rate factored in, day trading returns would need to be more than 16.2% annually. It's extremely unlikely that any investor, even a professional, could match market returns over 10 years, much less outperform the market to this extent. And that should do it for today. Have a happy rest of your St. Patrick's Day, and I'll see you on the Friday show tomorrow, where your optimal life awaits.